So uh, thanks, everyone in Georgia. Thank you for inviting me. It's, a, it's an honor to be engaging in this first panel. Uh, this is, I'm going to be presenting on a project that I think really brings together humanism and computation, and it's very much something in the MIT tradition. Um, basically, after the takeover of the Taliban, of the Taliban takeover of Kabul in August 2021, um, thank you so much. There was a group formed at MIT, uh, the MIT uh, Working Group on Afghanistan, trying to understand what we could be doing on a research level, human level, humanistic level, to help with the situation on the ground. Um, and this is basically, a, this project is a result of that effort. So basically, it's uh, what we've been trying to do, collaborating with uh, colleagues across MIT and a team on the ground in Afghanistan, is putting together, creating digital twins of endangered uh, heritage uh, sites uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, we all know Afghanistan, obviously, from the very long um, and ugly conflict in the past 20 years, but it's also a place that's a crossroads of civilizations with an array of really important heritage sites, both Buddhist and Islamic, and also some Greco-Bactrian sites of, of great importance. Uh, these uh, decades of conflict and the recent takeover are clearly putting these sites at risk, and um, at the time of uh, the Taliban uh, takeover of Kabul in August 2021, the UNESCO Director General made a call for the preservation of Afghanistan's cultural heritage, and this is a quote, in its diversity, in full respect of international law, and for taking all necessary precautions to spare and protect cultural heritage from damage and looting. So um, this is the MIT team uh, that uh, I've, I, I was able to put together, and also thanks to a Mellon grant from uh, the Center for Arts, Technology, and Science at MIT. And it's, a, it's basically also a colleague from uh, the School of Architecture, Nasser Abad, who also directs the Aga Khan program here on Islamic uh, architecture. Uh, a PhD candidate who's the, the lead in digital transformation and an incredible um, contributor to the project. And a, an alum of MIT architecture program, Jelena Pekovic, who is also a preservation architect focusing on uh, producing analog type, very detailed drawings that can help uh, co contribute in the context of preservation. Um, the five guys on uh, the bottom line, are the row, are clearly our superheroes. They're the guys behind all the data collection on the ground. Uh, they're a digital production team in Afghanistan that have been working with a, with a leading media group there. And uh, these are the folks who were able to train remotely through Zoom uh, to engage in photogrammetry and 3D scanning, and uh, you'll get to hear a, a little bit from them as well, not just about them uh, during this presentation. So uh, I just want to put there what are some of the ethical aspects of computing that relate specifically to this project be before presenting some of the outputs. Uh, obviously, I mean, there is a kind of a, a robotic type aspect in the sense of the use of drones, uh, some semi-autonomous, but mostly th through this team, and uh, computational tools to preserve these cultural heritage sites that are at risk. Uh, also, the concept of how you train a local team remotely in using these tools. And, and what it means to collect the data and who and and generally the data ownership of pro products like that. In our case, uh, they are co-owned with us and the team that has collected them. In addition, with us being um, able to share them with UNESCO, and also the idea of having producing outputs that allow people across the globe to visit these uh, sites that are obviously inaccessible. So uh, this, is, uh, this involves six sites. Uh, the, there are three Islamic sites and three Buddhist sites. So uh, the stupa in the, on the top left, uh, the Parwan stupa, and then the two bottom sites, Mazainak and the Bamiyan Buddhas, are the Buddhist sites. And then there are three mosques, Gawarshad, the Minaret of Jam, and uh, the Green Mosque that are obviously from the Islamic tradition. And two of these sites are on the UNESCO Heritage Site Risk, um, uh, UNESCO Heritage Site uh, List. So that's the Minaret of Jam and the Bamiyan Buddhas. And so far, we've, uh, we've collected data and uh, created digital twins of the four sites in addition to virtual reality experiences. And we're moving on with, hopefully, with the two other sites uh, after the end of uh, Ramadan and Eid. Uh, so the stupa was the site we started with first. 
uh, because this is, I mean, it's a Buddhist uh, site of great importance and it had uh, suffered uh, quite a bit because of the, because of uh, nat natural issues, but nature and weather issues, but also because of the conflict. And, and there were a, an array of different reconstruction efforts during the years of the uh, NATO alliance, pre uh, alliance presence on the ground. The reason why we started there first, in addition to the fact that it was proximate to Kabul, uh, was that it only had an outside. So the, there's nothing inside, it's sealed inside. So this idea of teaching photogrammetry for outside was kind of an easier first step for the team. And indeed, I mean, this is uh, basically the point cloud that came up from all the 5,000 images that the team collected. And this is kind of the first step towards a digital twin. And this just gives you a sense of how, how good a result we had just based on four sessions, uh, remote sessions all via Zoom. Uh, these five participants, only one drone, so this was not a very a particularly high-tech effort, and 5,000 images. But a, a lot of it obviously relied on the technique that we was being used in collecting the images appropriately. Uh, this is mesh geometry, so the next stage after the point cloud in, in getting closer to kind of the VR output as well and, and the actual digital twin gives you a sense of a different angle for, from the stupa. And you can also see uh, kind of the, uh, the, for people who are trained preservation architects, it's, it's, uh, this also gives very good evidence about wear and tear of the actual building. And this is the concept around kind of the scanning and, and the positioning and movement of the drone, kind of the, uh, the top down, the forward type of uh, movement in addition to kind of the spiraling to ensure that we get the full uh, capture of, of the site, including, uh, you know, obviously the dome and, and all different areas and some of the surrounding um, geography. Um, the second site, oh, and this is, uh, this is the output of the preservation architect. So this is actually going backwards. So using the super highly interrogable 3D model to create a 2D analog drawing. And this actually, if, if you see it, it it's, it's in, it designed to kind of to scale. And if you see it in, in real life, I mean, the detail of this ink drawing is just absolutely remarkable. Um, and, and has a lot of information in terms of the actual preservation and, and, and uh, the, the, as I said, the wear and tear of the site at the moment. The next uh, uh, site that we moved uh, to work with the team with was, the, was uh, this mausoleum in uh, Herat province of Afghanistan. And this was a harder site because we actually had to move inside and uh, we actually had to teach the team of, of how they can figure out this 3D scanning aspect of the inside and capture all the detail uh, of, of the architecture. And we also had to convince uh, the local authorities to allow us to remove everything that was inside. So all this kind of furniture and uh, random things that uh, panels of information that were sitting there. And this again, Nikos with a team uh, training them uh, in how to think about the actual scanning and, you know, scanning with an open door so that we can connect the outside data with the inside data, closing the door and, and all different information about how to capture the different aspects in the dome. And again, this is, we obviously, what we get at the end is this, uh, images that are, have lo longitude and latitude that we, th we then kind of stitch together on this end. Um, and you get an opportunity to see what that looks like in terms of the point cloud and then the mesh geometry. And again, here we had, uh, we captured a bit of the surrounding site as well. And you can see on the top right, these four pillars, which is an additional site that we end up, ended up capturing uh, while covering this mausoleum. Uh, and this is the team on the ground. As I said, they are, I mean, th these are a true digital production team. So in that sense, we were very lucky to be able to be collaborating with people who were extremely proud of what they were doing and, and very impressively competent. I mean, I can say the, the student that works with me on this project, Nicolas Vlavianos from, com from computational architecture here at MIT, he has scanned Machu Picchu. He has scanned an impressive array of uh, sites in Kyoto in, uh, in, in, our, in other parts of the world, including Mount Athos in Greece, which is kind of a, a monastery that's not accessible to women. And he, he himself was uh, attesting to the fact of how impressive these people have been in terms of, you know, remote training, not MIT training, and being able to produce such work within six months and four sites, uh, which, you know, um, 
he was just saying how he's done one site for his whole uh, PhD <laughs> uh, dissertation. Um, so this, this is again the team on the ground and uh, on the left, uh, he, it's, I thought it was remarkable that we got this picture because he's looking really particularly relaxed, <laughs> scanning one of the most impressive sites in, uh, in the Muslim world and then, uh, you know, obviously the the, the mosque that I just discussed, but it was, on the one hand, I, I also want to highlight how um, impressive, and but at the same t time low tech this was, in the sense that this is in the middle of nowhere, there's no running water, this is the only means of communication they had with us at, when they were on the Minaret, was this phone that they had to prop up so that it gets signal, and it was literally just WhatsApp messaging, because that was the most we could sustain, uh, given their conditions, and again, uh, I have to say I was very impressed with what uh, they were able to produce. So this is uh, the outside of the monastery in Herat, and you get a sense of a section and an elevation and the level of detail. Uh, as I said, it's quite remarkable, and they were terrific about in ensuring that we were able to connect the inside with the outside. Um, and, uh, and kind of you got a sense of, of what that looked like from the video, and again, the the actual analog um, drawing that we were able to produce in, in, in detail and in ink after using these very uh, detailed 3D uh, models. Um, then this is the minaret, and I started with a I started with a drawing, um, and this hopefully will give you a sense of the detail that the team captured uh, through the scanning. It's it's an absolutely stunning. Um, monument. In a, the valley is just remarkable. I mean, it's, uh, there's a river and it's just in, uh, in the middle of a valley. It's, it's highly inaccessible and just, uh, and, and therefore in, in danger also because of climatic, climatic uh, conditions, not just uh, the, the conflict. Just give you a sense of the level of detail. And then, I obviously, I could not hook up each and every one of you with VR glasses, even though I would love to have been able to do that. It would have been quite the experience, stumbling on each other, thinking we're actually visiting the Afghan site. But I, I'm, I, with this little video, I'm trying to give you a sense of, uh, basically, the, this VR experience, uh, someone who's wearing the glasses is perched up on one side of the hill and is looking down to the actual site. So this is kind of what the experience would try to be simulate would try to simulate. Uh, so you would kind of also be you'll be able to walk and look around. Um, and then uh, similarly, this is for the green mosque. It's another one of the sites that we covered. And this is what the VR experience would look like. You'd be looking at it from the outside. And then you would be able to actually enter the space. And here you're inside and you can admire the dome and the architectural detail. I, I want to, if you allow me one minute, because I want you to listen, to hear what some of the people who were engaged on the ground had to say about this. And the opportunity behind it in my thoughts is that we can uh, raise awareness of the world heritage sites that are in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, these uh, world heritage sites are in danger of natural disaster as well as internal conflicts. I think through this project, we can preserve these sites and raise awareness of it. The outcome of this project can be used for educational purposes as well as research and also it can be in future a tourism uh, industry as well. Since virtual reality is new topic in Afghanistan, uh, it is a challenge for the team uh, to learn, to grow and to gain more experiences. The team found this an interesting project to be involved in and we are looking forward to uh, have more sites to cover. I think making a permanent record of these uh, World Heritage sites is a huge honor to me. Learning the relationship between uh, digital photography and drone photography uh, with virtual reality was an astonishing uh, experience for us. 
especially when we capture thousands of images and then we put it together and process it and turning it into a virtual site uh, was an amazing uh, experience for us. ما تانستیم که آثارهای باستانی افغانستان به شکل دیجیتالی یا تریدی اسکان تریدی به جهانیان نشان بدیم ما گفته میتونیم که حتی شاید بالای اقتصاد کشور ما هم ای تاثیر کنه که چرا جهانگردان میتونه که از این آثارهای باستانی دیدن کنند این پروژه به شخص خودم یک پروژه خاص بود چرا که شکل فوتوگرافی یا تری دی اسکن به ما یک چالش بود که این ای پروژه را یاد گرفتم بعد از اون ما تانم که دیگه پروژه ها را خودم ران کنم و خودم اسکیچ کنم و پیش برم in closing i just want to put up some of the aspects of uh, where we think some of the ethical questions uh, um, and kind of the social responsibility aspects of this project uh, come up. I mean, I showed them earlier, but just issues of uh, uh, thinking about how to use such tools for uh, preservation of culture, how to think about what it means to re remote train teams on the ground, what it means about data ownership and output ownership and just uh, making it accessible uh, to the world. Uh, thanks very much for your time. And uh, as uh, Max is getting ready to go to the stage, we have time for a question. Anyone has a question? Yes, sir. There is a mic over there, right next to you. Thank you. I, I loved your talk. Um, I was just wondering if you've considered um, any uh, impact on the tourism industry. Like, for instance, you know, this is fantastic. You can go to World Heritage sites that are inaccessible or, you know, where females aren't allowed, and that's sort of, uh, it's, it's uh, amazing. But uh, what, what would be the impact on tourism industry uh, where, you know, w do you expect that tourism might dec decline because now people can get the same experience in the VR, or do you think it might... Uh, um, motivate people to go and visit in person as well? Yeah, no, no, this is a great question. I think this is something that people who are engaging in, in VR are thinking about actively. And, and the, generally, this, this has been very, uh, has ta really ta been taken up from museums. So a lot of the museums around the world uh, that have established collections are also are creating a lot of VR experiences for accessibility issues, for educational issues. But I mean, this particular case, the Afghan case, it's very much motivated by the fact that it's, it's actually inaccessible. So it's very much something that we cannot, we won't be able to visit and see. And I mean, it's, it's sweet and aspirational of the team on the ground to also think about this, obviously. But objectively, it's, it's a regime that's not open to uh, outsiders. And, it's, and also, in addition to using it for people to be able to visit, including displaced children of, uh, from Afghanistan and Afghans who, live, who don't live in, in the country anymore, in addition to everybody else, uh, is also hopefully useful for preservation. So for when we are able to again be operating on the ground and, and doing something for these sites, uh, how can we be using these digital twins to, to do that? Thanks so much. <laughs>